myself up I just think about your love, your love, your love Just think about your love, your love, your love Just think about your love Save 
can feel your power washing over me. I'm free indeed. What a great song, My Reason by Planet Shakers. You are the greatest, the song says. When people or things are defined as great, it means they are of an extent, intensity, ability, quality, or eminence above the average. If one is great, they are of a higher caliber than those surrounding them. The greatness of God is beyond our comprehension, and because He is God, His greatness is in a category of its own. But the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great, the mighty, and the awesome God. God is greater than any human we would consider to be great. He is worthy of our worship and adoration. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. The greatness of God and of His works is mentioned all throughout the Bible. We also use great to emphasize the heightened level of God's character qualities, such as His love, patience, strength, mercy, and faithfulness. Throughout the Bible, God did great miracles that brought freedom, healing, and salvation. The might of God is great and unsurpassed. Jesus is our great high priest. The Holy Spirit is great and provides us with freedom, power, wisdom, and hope. Because God is the creator of everything that exists, He exists outside of our realm of time and space. He is superior to His creation. Creation is finite, but God is infinite. No one else is great like God. Our response to God's greatness should be praise. Praise Him for His mighty deeds. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. We also listen to another Planet Shaker song. God is on the throne, and yes, He is, and He is in control. What strikes me with the lyrics of this song is when it goes, I can hear your voice singing over me, and I'm free indeed. The Bible says in Galatians 5.1, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Jesus shocked the Pharisees the spiritual leaders of his day, when he stated, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Jesus was asserting that we are all under the power and control of a tendency to sin. We can't get away from it by ourselves. Sin brings a penalty that by ourselves we can't escape either. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. So how do we find freedom? from the penalty and the power of sin that comes through accepting Jesus Christ's death on the cross as the payment for our sin. As we submit to Christ, sin loses its power. Christ's power takes over as we choose to trust and follow Him. Our sinful habits and thoughts and attitudes lose their control. Guilt disappears and peace of mind dominates. Right habits become the norm. That's freedom. True freedom. My name is Pastor Raymond, and you are tuning in to another episode of Midweek Inspirations. I was reading an article that came through my email, and the title immediately grabbed my attention. It read, Pastor killed by semi-truck while helping motorists in car fire. On Saturday, July 18th, KXII reported that a semi-truck struck a man around 11.30 p.m. on U.S. Highway 75. It reported that two men, one of which was John Powell, pastor of Emmanuel Baptist Church located in New Caney, Texas, had pulled over to help a man in a car that had caught fire after hitting a truck. Officers said that Powell saw the semi-truck headed for the other man who had stopped to help, and Pastor Powell pushed him out of the way to save him. The pastor was struck and died at the scene. 
Initially, there were only minor injuries resulting from the initial crash that caused the car fire that led the men to pull over. Dr. Russell Moore posted on Twitter Sunday expressing his shock and sadness for his former student and friend. Dr. Moore said, John was one of the best men I ever knew, sweet-tempered, humble, absolutely devoted to Jesus and to Catherine, his wife, and their kids. He recalled that John was in my Sunday school class, our men's Bible study, and my theology, ethics, and preaching classes at Southern. When anyone was in need, he was the first one there. Dr. Moore wrote an article for the Gospel Coalition on Sunday with the title, Why Losing a Loved One Doesn't Feel Real, that relives the phone call he received telling him that his brother in Christ had been unexpectedly killed. He writes, there's another reason the loss of our loved ones seem unreal to us, and that's because, in an important sense, it is not real. Pastor Dean and Sarah wrote that John never cared about being known faithfully plowed daily as a family man and a local church pastor. He did not sweat what many sweat. Robert Downen, a reporter for the Houston Chronicle, posted, In his final sermon, John Powell preached on Psalm 72 and prayed that, in the poor man's distress, Christians might be there. Thirteen days later, he died while pushing another person out of the path of a semi-truck after stopping to help a stranded motorist. Pastor Nathan Lino, one of Powell's closest friends, told Baptist Press, he loved the local church. As much as John loved to preach, and he did, he had an equal passion for the personal well-being of his people. He cared about their physical well-being and their discipleship. Theologian and president of Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, Albert Muller, posted on Twitter, It is impossible to imagine the heartbreak of this young family in the death of their husband and father and of his church in losing their pastor. But John Powell loved Christ, preached Christ, trusted Christ. Our hearts break for them. This is why we sing that all we have is Christ. Emmanuel Baptist released a statement Monday saying, This past weekend, our church experienced one of the greatest tragedies we can imagine. Pastor John Powell, in an act in the image of his sacrificial Savior, was killed in a traffic accident. While we deeply grieve this loss, we remember what he would want us to remember, that Christ is the head of the church. And the vision and passion that John instilled in us is still very much alive. John is survived by his wife, Catherine, and their four children. I share this with you because I want to honor a fellow pastor who truly exemplified what Jesus did for him. I do not know this man, but his death speaks a powerful message. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. To you out there, laying down your lives so that others might live, you are heroes. That's it for this week's Midweek Inspirations. Tune in again next week for more. Please like, share, and subscribe so that you are updated when new content is available. I'm also inviting you to church on Sunday. Join us at One Cornerstone for an awesome church experience. In the meantime, stay safe and God bless you.